changed in 150 years. Uh, I just wanted to explain like, coach related equilibrium, what you were just saying about uh, Malinix, but how it evolved. Oh, okay. The question is, I'd like you to elaborate on how the theory has changed in 150 years, and you mentioned punctuated equilibrium and nylon ace. Um, the, another good example, I'll start with nylon ace first because it's easy, of a bacterium evolving by mutation, natural selection, something completely novel, is a group of bacteria, I think they're from the genus Pseudomonas, um, grow commonly in the environment. And the story behind this is a group of Japanese scientists, happened to be biologists, were hiking one day, and they ended up in the backyard of a chemical factory. And there was a scummy pond there, as there often is in chemical plants. And bacteria were growing on the scummy pond. They were really growing like crazy. So they got very interested. And they went around the front door, knocked on the front, and said, what are you dumping in the pond? And it took them a couple hours to convince the people that they were not from the government. They were not police. They just wanted to know. And it turns out they were, this factory was making nylon. And they were dumping nylon, monomer, and polymers into this pond just to get rid of it. It was kind of a sleazy thing to do, but they were doing it. And then the biologist said, can we take a little bit back to, back to the lab? And you know, what would they say? He'd take it all back to the lab, as far as you want. Took it back, and they discovered that they, the pseudomonas that were growing in there were using nylon as a food source. Now, why is that significant? It's significant not just because you worry about these guys dissolving your speedo or something like that. But <laughs> nylon, I'm a swimmer, I worry about these things. Uh, nylon was first synthesized in 1937. It's not a natural compound. Why should any bacteria have the ability to break down this novel compound? It's a very good question. They assumed that in the 65 years since 1937, it had simply evolved the ability to do that. So other scientists, about 10 years later, who were skeptical of this said, let's check it out. So they took some ordinary pseudomonas that couldn't metabolize nylon, and basically they did the Lenski experiment. They teased them, they starved them for nutrition, and teased them with small amounts of the nylon polymer in there. After six weeks, a series of mutations took place that basically took a piece of junk DNA and mutated it in a few places and suddenly produced an enzyme, not a very good enzyme at first, but an enzyme that was capable of slowly breaking down the nylon polymer, and over a few more weeks it got better and better and better, and the nylonase gene evolved in the laboratory under human observation. So one of the things that Darwin didn't see is how rapidly evolution can actually take place. Punctuated equilibrium. Um, two young scientists, um, they were young then, Stephen Jay Gould and Niles Eldridge in the early 1970s, who were trained in paleontology, um, decided that paleontology was not being paid enough attention in the development of evolutionary theory. And in particular, one of the things that happens in paleontology all the time is that you find a species at a particular level in the fossil record, and you can trace it a couple million years ahead, and lo and behold, it doesn't change at all. And paleontologists thought that was kind of uninteresting. But Gould and Eldridge had an idea that almost became a slogan, and that was stasis is data. In other words, if you see the same morpho species, that's what paleontologists call the same shape, unchanged for a couple million years, that's important. That means that's a successful species. It's getting along for a long period of time. And what they argued is that the fossil record, um, I'm probably not supposed to draw on that at all. Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. I did that once. Um, is, <laughs> and, and you still have work? <laughs> okay. um, what they argued is that what often happens with species is that throughout time they remain the same for a period of time. Then you have a period of rapid change, and you see something else showing up clearly with an ancestor-descendant relationship, but radically different. Um, and then you see something else like this. And they call this whole idea punctuated equilibrium, because the idea is you have equilibrium, stasis over time, and then it is punctuated by a rapid change and you see the emergence of a new species. Now, an awful lot of people thought that, oh wow, this is evidence for creationism, because maybe what's happening is this species dies out, and then presto, we have creation here, and we have a new species, and then suddenly it dies out, and presto, we have two new species like that. So what you have are a series, one might say, of instantaneous creation events. Well, the interesting thing about that is even if that were true, it would imply a tremendously incompetent designer because everything this guy makes um, burns out and goes extinct. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, it's almost like General Motors, man. I mean, <laughs> I 
actually drive a GM car. So, I don't know, so but you know, it's, it's a love hate thing. But in any event, um, what Gould and Alfredge actually were explaining, and they were great pains to do it, is this is an instantaneous. Steve wrote in one of his papers that this sort of a change should best be regarded as geologically instantaneous. What is instantaneous to a geologist? In another paper, Gould wrote, about 50,000 years. So, but to a geologist, that's like that. So what you're talking about is basically the notion that evolutionary change is not slow, gradual, and constant, as Darwin might have thought, but rather proceeds in fits and starts. And you know when you think about the experiments I described from Richard Lenski, exactly the same thing. You have these bacteria growing for thousands of generations, generations, all of a sudden, bang, somebody's there metabolizing citrus.